we have um, Cicek Usigligil Uzgenis, head of IR of Coca-Cola Icicek here with us. Very warm welcome. Thank you, thank you, hi. Um, well, first of all, congratulations on actually achieving a top published position in um, the 2020 Emerging EMEA Executive Team Survey, where you achieved a third position for your CEO and a third position for your IR program in the consumer sector. Very well done on, on getting to the top, and, uh, and I think it's a, it's a very well-deserved award. Um, tell us and share with us what are your views on the award and what does that mean to you and your management? Well, thank you so much and thanks to everyone who voted for us. Well, it is surely a very important thing for us. Uh, we do uh, take these awards very seriously. Uh, here at CCI, investor relations is very important. We take it very seriously. It's starting from the board level uh, among senior management as well. Everybody is really uh, allocating their time to this uh, and their uh, resources. And we have a solid IR team. It has been the case uh, before we joined as well as, as the current IR team. Uh, so it is, you know, embedded in the company culture to have a solid communication with investors, a proactive uh, communication with investors. Uh, so in line with our vision to be the best FMCG company uh, in our operating regions, we have a clear strategic framework and that suggests to create value in everything we do. Uh, and creating value to shareholders is only an aspect of it. Uh, we want to create value for our communities, our customers and consumers, and our people, along with our invest investors. Uh, so financial results is uh, not the purpose, it is the result. And making sure to communicate this properly on a timely basis and on a consistent basis is also very, very important. Not just the financial results, the company strategy, all the ESG efforts, uh, corporate governance practices, everything along the way. Uh, so we really work very hard to meet the queries of our investors on a timely basis. Uh, we engage with them regularly via roadshows, uh, these days more virtually, of course, uh, conference calls, video calls. We try to arrange uh, times, time uh, meetings with management uh, on a frequent basis. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a really substantial effort uh, that we are trying to uh, put uh, forward. Therefore, being awarded for that, being respected for that is very important. And I once again thank, thank uh, everyone for voting for us. Yes, very good. And, and you mentioned obviously been an unprecedented year. Um, how did you um, cope through last year's challenges? And, uh, you know, given looking at your website very immediately, you can actually see the core sort of selling points of a CCI and what you stand for. And uh, you provide regular updates. Tell us and share with us a little bit about the practical measures that you have taken to continue the engagement with investors, please. Sure. Well, uh, first of all, it was, of course, a shock to everybody. It is the, the worst crisis that our company has faced in its history. And I mean, we are, we are an emerging and frontier markets butler. So uh, we are <laughs> always exposed to different ver ver versions of crisis. But this was by far the worst. It was very unprecedented. But we were uh, one of the lucky ones because of our industry, because of our system, being a part of the you know, global cost system also helped a lot because there were other butlers who were in ahead of the curve uh, in the pandemic situation. So we learned from them. The, uh, you know, the teams exchanged know-hows and experiences among each other within the system. Everybody supported its, uh, each other. Uh, along with our, you know, suppliers, customers, so we we became even stronger, even more uh, closely connected as a system, and um, you know, having that muscle developed of dealing with crisis, uh, we responded very quickly and effectively to this uh, very challenging environment. So the the uh, management took a very serious set of actions immediately, and uh, you know. Uh, it, it, it was a you know crisis situation, obviously, but the steps were very clearly defined. And as IR team, our job was to make sure that we communicate this to, to the investor community because they were also concerned about what's going to happen. I mean, internally, uh, you know, after passing the initial shock, we became aware that you know with our uh, capabilities, with our very strong brands, uh, the experiences that we have, we can weather this crisis smoothly. Uh, but we had to tell this to the investors, and you know, 
uh, get them relieved as well. So uh, we became uh, very proactive and uh, you know very frequent in you know touching base with consume uh, with with our investors. Uh, you know we overly communicated. I can say the number of meetings we held in 2019 was 25 percent higher than uh, in a you know, in, in the year before, in 2019, of course, lack of travel was frustrating at first, but it had it had its benefits as well, uh, because without spending time on travel, uh, we could meet investors as frequently as we want. Uh, everybody was just one click away on their Zoom platforms. So, uh, you know, we engaged that with them a lot. We were very proactive. Uh, we explained them all the actions that we are taking. Yes, there was a lot of uncertainty and unclarity uh, we withdrew our guidance immediately the, the full year financial guidance that we gave uh, to the to the investor community by february uh, we immediately withdrew it uh, saying that i mean we have no visibility at the moment it is obvious that we will not be able to meet this guidance we will update you as frequently as possible uh, when we have any information but for the time being we are withdrawing this but even though we withdrew the guidance, we made sure that investors are uh, updated at every step of the way when there's a new development, uh, the actions that we are taking, how they're impacting us. And I think the investors really appreciated this, you know, over communication strategy. So I can say 2020, I mean, I've been doing investor relations for 16 years now. This is my 17th year. And I think 2020 is the, was the busiest year from an investor relations perspective. I can easily say that. Wow, interesting. And and obviously, um, the pandemic has also put the spotlight on ESG. The buy side and sell side in our survey and the Emerging EMEA Executive Team Survey are also assessing you on the basis of the quality of ESG um, engagement and reporting that you're providing. Uh, give us a little bit of a glimpse of uh, where you're at in, in terms of your ESG um, uh, journey and also how you aligned with your investors on ESG metrics. Sure. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, we have a clear strategic framework that leads to creating value in everything we do. I'm not just talking about short-term profit maximization, but long-term sustainable value creation. And this is our strategy. Therefore, we engage our stakeholders at every step of the way. Uh, we, as stakeholders, we have our customers and consumers, as I said, our communities, our people and our investors. So uh, when we are shaping our strategy on ESG and our targets, we do extensive analysis of what they, what internal and external stakeholders expect from us. We do this through surveys, stakeholder dialogue workshops, uh, to listen and understand the expectations. We do ESG specific roadshows with investors to see what they are expecting from CCI in terms of ESG strategies. And the outcomes of this works help us shape our ESG strategy and then it is, it is integrated into, into the company's purpose. Uh, so it's all integrated. Um, you know, consumer well-being, customer value, human rights, human capital, community development projects, environmental footprint. These are all our, you know, focus areas. And we make sure that our, you know, stakeholders, investors and other stakeholders are aligned with the strategy, this focus areas. And, uh, you know, their requests, their queries are being taken very seriously. And uh, we are reshaping and evaluating and, you know, improving our uh, ESG strategy constantly based on these outcomes. Mm, so good. I can say it's a revolving and constantly living strategy and constantly improving strategy. Sure, sure. Um, corporate governance is obviously a big part of that as well. Would you be able to just share with us what, what your approach is and, and how that impacts you? Well, co corporate governance, I mean, currently it is, you know, widely, widely used and everybody is really complying with a lot of principles, of course. But uh, for CCI, I can say uh, that it is again, embedded in the company culture. And since its IPO in 2006, corporate governance uh, adherence to corporate governance principles, uh, international standards, has always been a priority. Uh, our board really 
uh, values this a lot, and so does our senior management. So corporate governance principles, you know, how the board is structured, its composition, um, its independence, uh, the uh, in, in the internal audit mechanism, uh, internal controls, uh, you know, ethic values. Um, these are all very important to CCI. So we make sure that we are uh, complying with these uh, to a great extent. And when when we talk to investors, we are clearly seeing the benefit of this. Uh, especially, I mean, both on the equity side and on the fixed income side. On the fixed income side, we can even quantify the importance of uh, uh, corporate governance with you know lower interest rates. And we know that you know adherence to good corporate governance practices also you know when when a company does that, uh, investors are also uh, willing to pay even a premium to a company to invest in that uh, just just for the sake of uh, good corporate governance uh, principles. Uh, we know that rating credit rating agencies also uh, take this very seriously. And we have our independent uh, corporate governance rating available, which is one of the highest ones in the Istanbul Stock Exchange. Uh, so uh, we have our corporate governance committee uh, that that meets regularly, uh, discusses the you know uh, the the best practices what investors are asking what they expect from us uh, and we are aware that this is a two-way communication it's not just communicating to the investor community what what we are doing but also communicating their wishes or, or to the board level so corporate governance committee is a is a vehicle to do that so we are really taking it seriously and uh, you know at, adhering to the corporate governance principles in CCI. Mm, very good. Um, we've obviously seen recently um, a very rapid adoption with regards to technology, uh, technology and technological platforms. Um, but the digitization of IR has been actually a buzzword for you know many 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 years before. Um, tell us a little bit about the tools um, and data perhaps that you are using that helps actually make your IR work more efficient and effective. Well, of course, when talking about digital digitization, the first thing that comes to our mind is IR being more effective. IR work is becoming mobile with all processes linked to each other. Uh, and at the end, a complete IR ecosystem is emerging. So that is, that is very important. Uh, big data and artificial intelligence are uh, you know, really making uh, the job of IROs easy. Uh, the, when defining your IR strategy using big data and AI uh, is very uh, beneficial to have a you know tailored made uh, IR program uh, to target new investors to see uh, who would be willing to invest in your company and you know meet their demands. So uh, this is definitely, I mean, the whole world is benefiting from big data and AI. Uh, so does investor relations, and with that we are using, uh, we have increased the, I mean. Previously, we were using some other platforms as well, but we have also increased our um, digital tools. Uh, we are working with third-party solution providers to, you know, help us with investor perception, uh, you know, from digital platforms uh, to gather data and assess our, you know, targeting uh, activities accordingly. So uh, this this is a strategy that we are following, and I'm sure that in the in the near future, the efforts on this will increase. Mm, very good. And you've just mentioned as well that you have nearly 17 years experience in investor relation. Um, what a great achievement. What, what are, as a result of that, what are your, um, your top tips with regards to um, IR and what are your must have in terms of structure or tools that you can't do uh, without? Well, I mean, the, the first thing that comes to my mind always is that the number one rule of investor relations is that don't just show your face when you have a good story to tell, but be present more than ever in difficult times. This is the number one strategy. Uh, investors really appreciate seeing the face of the company uh, when there is a crisis, uh, when the company is going through a difficult period. When there's an important thing, being proactive is always appreciated and being visible is always appreciated. So I know that some some companies are, you know, really reluctant to go on roadshows when the company is going through a difficult uh, time. But 
believe me, you know, when you step in front of the investor and tell them, yes, we have this challenge ahead of us, but we are taking these, these, these steps to, you know, uh, manage this process. And at the end, we expect this, this, this outcome. Uh, investors really appreciate it a lot. And I think it has a very long-term uh, sustainable benefit for, for the company. So that is my number one uh, advice to any uh, any person who starts investor relations. Communication is key. You have to have very good communication skills, uh, storytelling, storytelling abilities, uh, and relationship skills. Uh, you know, you have to, you, we are dealing with people and you have to have a high EQ. IQ is, of course, important at every, everything that we do, but EQ, having a, a high EQ is very important. Having empathy, building a relationship with the person, with the investor, with the analyst, even at a personal level. I mean, when, when you ask them about, you know, how their son is doing or whether their daughter is was going to start school, whether it's, it, it happened, they understand that you care, actually. It's not just one investor who is, you know, it's just, just a name on the, on the list, but that you actually care about them. And it really pays off in terms of building this relationship. Uh, so, you know, as, as a must, relationship skills, communication skills, storytelling skills, and presentation skills, of course, which can easily be uh, learned later on. Uh, but that's imp important. People have to invest in, in themselves when they do invest in relations and reading a lot about, about your industry, about your peers, because there are a lot of things happening, uh, especially these days. You cannot really catch everything, but you, knowing your company inside out is not enough. You have to understand your industry. You have to know what's going on uh, about your peers. And uh, when there's an important development, if you are proactive and tell the investors or analysts who cover you that, for example, one Cop Butler is buying another one or an uh, important development happened on the tech side, etc. If you are proactive and tell them ahead uh, before they read it on the news, I'm not talking about inside information, of course, but any, any new development that you are aware in the, in the company or the industry, but maybe the community is not, being proactive on that really pays a lot as well. So, uh, in essence, uh, th this would be the advice that I would give. Yeah, very, very good um, advice. And I've taken a note of the EQ versus the IQ. I think that's a very important one. Um, and finally, I have a few um, uh, quick questions for you um, to get to know Chitek maybe a little bit more on a personal level. And uh, the, the first question for you is, please name a historical person um, uh, who would that be and what would you ask them? Uh, <laughs> I think it's, uh, you know, I, I give an answer that is very, you know, if, if you're a Turkish person, I think everybody can guess who I'm going to say. I think I would like to meet Atatürk, the founder of Turkish Republic, and I would ask him whether he would come back. Who's your favorite singer um, or band? Um, my favorite, I have two, not necessarily in the same uh, genre, but uh, my favorite singer would be Louis Armstrong, mm -hmm. uh, jazz vocalist, and my favorite band would be The Pesh Mode. Oh, wow, very different, isn't it? <laughs> um, it shows how old I am. <laughs> uh, which quote from a movie do you use on a daily basis? Well, there are a couple, but I think there is one that I use a lot, and I think it's a very good fit to this one. Uh, it's an old movie, 1970s or 80s movie, uh, with Paul Newman in it, cool, cool Hand Look, and it says, what we've got here is a failure to communicate. It's a very, very famous quote, and I use it extensively because our job is totally communication. That's a very good one. Very good. And the last question for you, uh, Chichek, today is which book did you least, uh, last read? Sorry. Uh, I last read a, a, a murder novel by a, a Turkish economist, actually, uh, Mahfey Mah Mas. Uh, his first book is on, on you know, uh, you know, murder uh, mystery uh, called Inferis. Uh, that that was the late, latest book that I read. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Titek Usigligil Uzgunis. Thank you very much for your time today. 
And uh, congratulations Thank you. again on the winning positions that you have achieved in the Emerging EMEA Executive Team Survey 2020. Um, hopefully we'll be able to catch up uh, during the two-year summit uh, this year, fingers crossed. Um, but all the best uh, from, from me and all the best uh, uh, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.